Today is Tuesday, December the 6th, 2016, and I have more great news from President-elect Donald Trump. He is bringing more jobs to the U.S. of A. This time, he's bringing 50,000 jobs. Now, before I get into the details of this particular deal here, I want to talk about the carrier deal a little bit that people want to criticize. I mean, you got uh, Sarah Palin calling it crony capitalism and stuff like that. People talking about, oh, well, people, all they got to do is just threaten to leave the U.S. of A and they'll get a tax break. But what's wrong with giving tax breaks to companies as an incentive for them to keep jobs here? Because if they're going to leave, why not just keep the job? Like you got to have jobs in the United States. You can't just keep taxing people out of existence or making them go offshore. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you're going to have a business that has jobs, like a thousand jobs, 1500 jobs, 2000 jobs in the area, and they're all going to go to Mexico. Why not try to save some of them? That's what happened in the carrier case where you save 1000 jobs. A few of them still did go to Mexico, but he was able to save a lot of jobs. And he was also able to persuade carrier to invest millions into uh, renovating or building another shop. You understand? So they're going to be investing in infrastructure of the area that could last beyond them actually being there if they wanted to leave. So that's part of a good deal being made. Now, this new deal is much greater than the carrier deal. It kind of dwarfs the carrier deal as far as the amount of money that is being invested in the actual jobs that are being created. Now, what I want to do right now is show you a very short clip from uh, Trump Tower where Donald Trump was talking to the guy. Masayoshi Son, who was the CEO of SoftBank in Japan, which is also the third largest company in Japan and one of the top 100 in the world. So it's a very big deal. So without further ado, go ahead and roll it. This is Masa of SoftBank from Japan, and he's just agreed to invest $50 billion in the United States and 50,000 jobs. And he's one of the great men of industry so i just want to thank you very thank much. you thank you thank you very much all right so you see what's going on there you know this is a pretty big deal and you know like understand this is happening without trump actually being in office you know i think obama's probably got to be the biggest lame duck of all time i mean you got president elect donald trump over here bringing thousands upon thousands of jobs and you got obama basically golfing and whatnot he might as well just go ahead and move out right now <laughs> just go ahead and move out right now because he's not being effective donald trump is really the guy that's being effective in more ways than one on a business stage and as far as being able to gain respect from world leaders and you know i saw them talking about when i say them i'm talking about the mainstream media and so and some so-called republicans talking about oh the carrier deal was crony capitalism i think that was sarah palin that said that but it's like what does it got to do with crony capitalism? I mean, why not keep the jobs? I mean, you're just going to let them go? It makes no sense. Give tax breaks to those that deserve it. And also, people are talking about uh, his phone call to Taiwan, talking about how that was ruining uh, Chinese relations. But, I mean, President Obama has sold them over a billion dollars in weapons. So that could be seen as a way to try to start a proxy war with China and China because Taiwan theoretically is China. But it's not because it's a sovereign place. But I digress. That could be seen as a way to start a proxy war and trying to arm the Philippines, which is why the Philippines decided to not deal with the U.S. as much and align themselves more with China and Russia because they don't want to be caught in yet another proxy war like the way they were during World War II when they were occupied by the Japanese because the U.S. of A was there and the U.S.A. was the enemy of Japan after they had bombed Pearl Harbor. That's why they came to the Philippines. Right now, some would say that the Japanese were uh, invading all of the, you know, the, the Pacific region, but they would not have been in the Philippines as long as they were if the U.S. was not there trying to stage a war with them from there. It's pretty simple. In my humble opinion, it was a proxy war. But aside from that, this deal here with Donald Trump, I'm sure people are going to criticize it. They're going to say, oh, he's selling off United States assets. You know, how dare he? He's not in office yet. How can he make these deals? You know, what are the details of it? Are they going to bring Japanese workers, et cetera, et cetera? It's always going to be some kind of criticism, just like everything else he does. It's like the same thing that's going on with the cabinet positions. I mean, you got Ben Carson as the HUD secretary and people are saying that he's not qualified. I mean, what are the qualifications to be a HUD secretary? And it's weird. On one hand, if Donald Trump appoints people to positions in the cabinet, 
that have already had Washington, D.C. experience or that have worked jobs in a similar field, then all of a sudden he's not draining the swamp, which was part of his promise. But if he appoints people that do not have D.C. experience at all, then the people are unqualified. So at a certain point, we just got to understand people that want to support Trump, people that are conservatives and et cetera, that the media will never be happy with what he does. There's always going to be a way to find some kind of flaw in what he's doing. And I think that you just got to pretty much live with it. Understand that the media is biased against him and understand what he's doing here is bringing back jobs. When these jobs come and the economy improves, they're still going to try to find a way to say that something is wrong. But at the end of the day, you know better. It's just like when they try to say the unemployment rate is at an all time low and whatnot. You know better than that because you see around you, you see yourself, your friends or family are suffering. And if you do have a job, it's low pay. You're not getting paid what you used to. Your money is not going as far as it used to. So you understand that the situation is not good. It's nowhere near what they're trying to paint for you in the media. So you could pretty much just ignore them and look at reality for what it is and seek out alternative voices like myself and many others on the internet, radio, wherever it is, maybe even some on TV that tell you the truth and just look at it for your own self. You know that if there's jobs being brought to the US of A where we really need them, that's a good thing and not a bad thing. You could try to find the bad in it, but <laughs> you gonna have a hard time really doing that if you're looking at it from an objective point of view and not a biased one against Trump. So what do you think? Do you think it's a good deal for him to bring 50,000 jobs and 50 billion of investment dollars from Japan into the U.S. of A? Do you think that they will be the majority uh, of the jobs? Would it be Japanese workers? Would it be Chinese workers? Or would it be for Americans? What do you think that the money is being exchanged for? When he says he's going to invest 50 billion, is it going to be into infrastructure? Is it going to be into uh, software, hardware? What is it going to actually be? This is SoftBank, so I'm not really sure what they're going to be doing. I have no idea if you know about what they're going to be doing as far as the jobs are concerned. Let me know in the comments below. Or do you think a lot of what's going on here with Trump and the jobs is like a dog and pony show? He's not really going to bring jobs back to the U.S. of A. He's just doing this for show to make himself appear to be more than what he is. It's just not really a real thing. It's like a mirage. Now, if that's your assertion, then please explain to me why you think that way. And if what he's doing is a mirage, then what was Obama doing? I mean, I've not really seen Obama talking about job creation. All I've seen that Obama has done and the rest of the mainstream media that is a cooperation with him is to promote these uh, false Fugazi uh, employment numbers, trying to play with the numbers and toy with the numbers to make you think something that is not true. They're talking about 5.1% unemployment. When meanwhile, you go to the inner city ghetto People just sitting around doing nothing. And then the jobs that we do have, like I said before, are, are peanuts at best. So that's pretty much all I got for it. Whatever your comments are, let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.